grab your popcorn, kick back and relax, because it's time for some more carnage. So, in today's video, we got another Foxtrot unboosted solo. So you can see the task force here, and the reason why I show that is just so you can see that this is a five-man group, so the operations are scaled as the same as what a five-man would have it. Um, so, today I've got two ridiculously insane hits to show you. Um, and I'm literally recording this out of sheer fear that if I don't, and I wake up tomorrow morning and Supercell release some sort of update, and which causes me to lose this gameplay footage, I will lose my mind. I will legitimately rage to a point where I might actually break my phone. So, um, the first hit is on duality. So you can see the unboosted stats there, and this was really close. Um, so you can see the damage, you can see the troop health. Now, all cores on Foxtrot have 200,000 base health. So this one had, if you get 200,000 plus 360%, you come out with something like 840,000. So uh, two artilleries there to take out the two mines and mark the flamethrower is what just happened there um, I probably would have went for the double hit on the mines and then just the one artillery on the building but I think he got one artil one mine with the artillery and then tried to get the building and the mine with the next artillery not sure whether that was accidental or just how he went about it I don't know um, so I, without Without boosting, you didn't. He didn't really have the gunboat energy to destroy the boom mine, so he just sort of copped it on the chin. Um, so you can see how many smokes he used there. So flaring the core, critters, shock, shock, and that's all she wrote. So only, only two shocks and one critter bot, one critter, and the universal remote getting the first round. And basically just using that as that building as a really amazing distraction for all the other rockets because you can see there's the so many rockets that had range and I will actually go back and show you guys that so that's pretty much what it was so rather than spending ridiculous amounts on more shocks he literally just used the critter box and the universal remote as the distraction and then that's pretty much all she wrote so um, so I'll just show you the range of the rockets here. So you can see one here, one here, this one had range, that one just barely had range. Um, so re pretty ridiculous. So that first shock gets the rocket, the mortars, um, critter box and the universal remote distracts the flamethrowers as well as all the rockets that were around. And really skilled use that he knew exactly what building the, the um, what's it called, Everspark was going to take over with the remote. And you've seen in the attack that he actually marked this flamethrower with the artillery. So he knew that the universal remote would actually take over that flamethrower, which is exactly what he needed. Um, so really amazing skilled attack there. Um, this is actually the first time I'm watching these attacks. I haven't really seen this one yet. I did watch Duality just a little bit so I could get a bit of a feel for it. But um, I think this one just had just under 900k. So I will pause this and look for the ice statues. Actually, so we'll put it on half time so we can see it. So 246 and 87. So that one will be like... I don't know, maybe 700k, I think. I think that's what about what it would wind up to be. But you guys can check that anyway. It's just 200k plus whatever that ice that ice was for building health. So, go back to one times. So, destroying cells here to get some energy because all Scorchers takes ridiculous amount of gunboat energy to use. Flaring up here, and the plan's going to be to destroy these rockets, then flare back behind the HQ. So... The shock launchers here are out of range behind the core, and you can see that the rockets aren't, obviously. So he's going to have four rockets to contest with, along with some flamethrowers. 
Now, I'm just kind of surprised he did this. I wouldn't have fled here. I would have fled directly to the to the cannon. But I, the downside to doing it that way would have been that the snipers would have been getting free shots on your scorchers along the way. And maybe that's why he decided to spend the extra flare just to go back there. Just to save a bit of health on his scorchers. Um, so timing... Ooh, he didn't get the the rocket launcher. That's interesting. I guess he... I know he said this was going to be close. Um, in terms of his damage per second. And in the end, he wound up beating this with exactly two seconds left on the clock. I think he said it took like a few seconds for buildings to get destroyed or something like that. Uh, but very, very close attack. So... That's a, quite a lot of smokes when you're using all scorches without a boost. Um, so he's gotten back here now. So now the now the point is going to be to destroy these flamethrowers so they don't tear his scorches apart. Because remember, he doesn't have troop health. That's really dangerous when you when you're using all scorches. I mean, that's about as ballsy as it gets. Um, so again, just still trying to rip away on these flamethrowers. So they don't eat eat too much of his scorches up. Uh, then he's gonna flare back. Yeah. Okay. So he flares back, hoping that he has enough scorches alive right now to start ripping away on that HQ. And you can see these shock launchers are get ripping into that scorcher up there. And I'm not at this point. I'm not sure why those scorches ignored the flare. Ah, he flared the core. That's why. If he had have let that one Scorcher go up the top, I guess maybe it would have stayed alive a bit longer, but not a big deal, I guess. Uh, so, eating away at the HQ right now, so we'll double times it, and it's just, actually we'll four times it. So, just eating away at the core here, eating away, eating away, very, very lucky hit. Without troop health, without any sort of a boost, this base is... I can't even fathom into words exactly how hard that is. I mean, you've seen how many smokes he used. Without a boost, I mean... I can't even... I can't even... Like, I know I say I can't even put into words, but like... I'm not sure how to describe how ridiculous that is. You've seen how many smokes he used. And he did not have a boost. At all. And no troop health. And he still got that down. So that shows you, like, if you have troop health, and you boost maybe, uh, the, the troop damage, and, like, a GBE masterpiece, or even your troop health as well, if you're willing to drop 3 powder, I mean, that's a guaranteed hit. But as, as, as seen, like, you can do it unboosted, but this is probably one of the few bases I'm going to show where I'd highly, highly recommend against it. Um... I'd probably say drop one or two powder at least, just to sort of guarantee yourself to hit. And guarantee yourself to win there. Uh, but, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, to be perfectly honest, this is two bases that I didn't think was going to be posted on the series. Just because of how ridiculous the difficulty was of those hits. Um, and before we sign off, I will show you... Tarzia and exactly why this base has not been done yet. Uh, we did almost have a win on this on our first operation. Uh, Tika almost soloed this, and he did do the last the two bases in this video, in case I did not mention that. So, you can see all of the shock launches here. We got rockets, we got more rockets, we got rockets over here, we got rockets over there. Machine guns, we got a doom cannon there. So no matter where you sit, there's this stuff everywhere. Like, if I park the normal spot next to these sniper towers here, I've got one shock on these rockets, one shock on these shock launcher rocket combo, another shock here on these, another shock to get these three, because that one will be out of range, um, and then another shock on these two. With critters to distract the Doom Cannon, which would have to be placed maybe on this mortar. Um, but, like, that's how many shocks it's going to take. 
If I use Everspark from a range, I can take out these two if I mark them. But even with that, that's one, two, three, four... Four shocks and a critter box. That's for one round of shots. Which it's probably going to take more than that to do that. So I'm probably going to need to find a way to buy myself enough time for another one or two hits. And that's obviously not going to happen with all these shock launches. So, I mean, that that's why this base hasn't been done yet. So if we get a base that requires just a little bit more, little less shocks, then we'll be able to afford the GBE to actually do it unboosted. But I guess until then, I guess that one's going to get put on the back burner a little bit. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, tell me what you thought in the comments down below. Uh, I, I thought these attacks were downright sensational. I mean, Tika is a god. I don't know any way of explaining it other than that. He's a god. Um, I've, I Honestly, I have tried these bases in the past unboosted. And I failed quite a few times. So... Um, Really amazing that he was able to get them. So, if you enjoyed, uh, tell me what you thought, and I'll see you guys in the next one.